אחר, רבותיי. התקשורת הזאת שעומדת כאן, כולה, יש לנו ציוד מלא שהיא לא אמרה מעולם את דברינו. נזכיר אותך על ידי המשטרה הזאת, זה הטכניקה. והם רוצים לחקור את עצמם, שיתביישו. אז תראו איפה הצדק. הם עכשיו ייכנסו ויהיה כאן טבח, אבל הטבח, גם הם יעברו עם הטבחים. כאן אף אחד, רבותיי, לא יעצים, משורה. אם הם ייכנסו, על פי ההלכה הבאה להוגיך השכם להוגו. This is an overview of the so-called Yehud barricade incident in which Uzi Mashulam and his followers barricaded themselves inside a house demanding a national inquiry into the alleged abduction of Yemenite children in the 1950s. The house was turned into an armed compound and occupied for 50 days. The aim of this documentary is to analyze the tactics and strategies of the Israel National Police in terms of the integrated use of negotiations and force. The incident has been divided into three main stages. The eve of Passover, March 23rd through the 25th, 1994. The middle negotiation period from March 25th to May 9th. The meeting at the Avia Hotel and the conclusion of the incident, May 9th through the 11th. Uzi Meshulam, or Rav Uzi as he is called by his followers, claims to be an ordained rabbi and comes from a Yemenite background. He is the self-proclaimed leader of a group promoting the interests of Yemenite children lost or abducted in the early 1950s. He heads a congregation of formerly assimilated Jews, many of whom he is responsible for having returned to traditional Judaism. Meshulam's charisma is expressed both verbally and through music. He opposes the Israeli establishment, which he views as the great enemy. He portrays himself and his followers as the true Jews, unlike the rest of Israel. Over the past 15 years, Meshulam has succeeded in attracting a group of people who see him as rabbi, leader, and teacher. They are loyal to him in heart and soul. Meshulam and his followers established an organization called Mishkan Ohalim, through which they financed and promoted their struggle. Although the origins of the Yehud incident appeared to be ideological, the initial reasons for police intervention were due to a civil conflict between Meshulam and a contractor at a building site near Meshulam's house. Only after the police arrived did the confrontation begin and only then did the group raise the issue of a national inquiry into the lost Yemenite children. It was the first time Israel's national police had encountered Meshulam. In Yehud, when they first attempted to meet with Meshulam, the Tel Aviv district commander and the Don sub-district commander were met with gunfire and Molotov cocktails. One firebomb hit Tel Aviv District Commander Gabi Last. After local police forces had assembled and organized at the site of the incident, the national units were activated, including the anti-terrorist unit, the negotiation unit, and the helicopter unit. When the situation calmed, the national Israeli police began negotiations. In total, 11 mediators were used during the incident, including members of the Knesset, Israel's parliament, lawyers, members of the Mishkano Alim Foundation, and friends of Meshulam. The interaction of these third parties with Meshulam and his followers were coordinated and at times manipulated by the police negotiation unit. The effect of these mediators can be characterized as at times helpful, at times ineffective, and sometimes counterproductive. During the incident, the Israel National Police made use of other units for support services. These included the Israel Defense Forces Engineers Unit, rescue units from the fire department and ambulance service, civil bodies, the electric company, telephone company, and the Yehud municipality. The chain of command consisted of the Minister of Police who represented the government, Command for the incident, headed by the Commissioner of the Israel National Police, followed by the Tel Aviv District Commander, and the following units. The Serious Crimes Investigation Unit. The Don Sub-District Police Command. The Negotiation Unit. The Police Anti-Terror Unit. The Central Intelligence Unit of the Tel Aviv District. 
The command of this operation was placed in the hands of the Tel Aviv district commander. The Israel National Police's well-defined chain of command simplified and facilitated the decision-making process and the continuity of command over the course of the incident. Operational objectives included removal of Meshulam from his house and separation from his followers, arrest of group members suspected of criminal activity, disassembly of the compound. The justification for police action was the quantity of weapons and ammunition, the potential for violence, and the barricading of the group members inside the compound. The operational plan was to lure Meshulam from his house through negotiations, divide him from his followers and arrest him, elicit the surrender of his barricaded followers through a combination of negotiations and force, arrest suspects in the periphery, and disassemble the compound. Throughout the incident, negotiations were directed by the negotiation unit of the Israel National Police. This unit included negotiators, the negotiation unit command post, the combined negotiation unit consisting of Army, General Security Service, Research Unit and Reserve Duty personnel, intelligence, the technical support team including special equipment and audio surveillance, interrogation and analysis, and mediators. The negotiation unit was responsible for remaining in continuous contact with the barricaded followers throughout the incident. Uzi Mashulam was the sole party responsible for conducting the negotiations for the group inside the compound, although Ora and Natan Chifris and Elisheva, Mashulam's wife, were sometimes used as secondary spokesmen. <laughs> Throughout the incident, there were frequent meetings for the purpose of coordination and daily briefings of the various unit commanders by the incident commander, Tel Aviv District Commander Gabi Last. In parallel, meetings were called by the police commissioner and minister of police in response to new developments. At the outset of the incident, negotiations were conducted by the Tel Aviv DC and the Don sub-DC in Meshulam's house. Later, third-party mediators were brought in to try to reach an agreement. Negotiations through third parties ended with a meeting between the Don sub-DC, the head of the negotiation unit, and Meshulam. The head of the Israel Police Negotiation Unit took charge of negotiations in order to strengthen communications with Meshulam's group. During the entire negotiation process, behavioral profiles of Meshulam and his followers were developed updated and analyzed. The operational strategy for managing the incident involved lowering anxiety, building trust, and preventing extremism and deterioration of the situation. The negotiation unit switched to its so-called Yemenite team, Chief Superintendent Katabi and Captain Barzilai. Newly sworn in Chief Inspector Asaf Hefetz was later brought into the negotiation process. Throughout the incident, there was intensive media coverage from newspapers, radio, and television. The media maintained direct contact with Meshulam, both inside and outside the compound. The police did not use tactics involving manipulation of the media. A command post and press liaison were set up by the police in the area of the incident. During the incident, personal initiatives by members of the Knesset did not result in substantive effects. All police actions were monitored by the Minister of Police, Mr. Moshe Shachal. On May 1st, five weeks into the incident, Meshulam and two of his mediators had a chance encounter with members of the negotiation unit in the unit's van. This meeting continued the process of confidence building. When Meshulam returned to his house, he left with a feeling that he could trust the police not to harm him. On May 1, 1994, when Rafi Pellet's resignation as commissioner took effect, 
Asaf Khefetz assumed the duties of this position. The new commissioner entered immediately into the negotiation process, opening a direct line of communication with Meshulam. This added to Meshulam's trust and his belief that the police would not cause him harm. Simultaneously, a meeting took place between the head of the negotiation unit, Alex E. Shalom, and Mr. Shaul Aharon, Meshulam's trusted attorney. After this meeting, friction developed between Meshulam and his attorney, a situation which laid the groundwork for luring Meshulam out of the compound. At this stage, negotiations were aimed at arranging a meeting between the commissioner and Meshulam. Arrangements for this meeting were made through the efforts of the negotiation unit's so-called Yemenite team, the commissioner's security officer, who was actually the deputy head of the negotiation unit, and Meshulam's mediators, Abiyad Levy and Shlomo Guri. Meshulam's consent to meet with the commissioner followed receipt of a written statement from the commissioner ensuring his welfare. The meeting took place on the night between the 9th and 10th of May at the Avia Hotel near Yehud after hours of tension and uncertainty about whether Meshulam would arrive and if so, when. In the early hours of the morning of May 10th, Meshulam arrived at the Avia Hotel in disguise and accompanied by his armed bodyguards. They were arrested by the police anti-terrorist unit and the central detective unit of the Tel Aviv district. After the arrest, forces were deployed to close off the compound in Yehud. As the forces began to arrive there, Meshulam's followers opened up with a large and effective display of firepower. At the same time, through the use of high-intensity loudspeakers, a call was made for a ceasefire, and negotiation unit member Udi made telephone contact with those inside the compound. At the request of Meshulam's followers, one of the wounded was taken to the hospital, where he died of his wounds. A ceasefire went into effect, calming the situation. The father and brother-in-law of the member who died were taken out of the compound and attended to by the negotiation unit. Two previously arrested members of Meshulam's group were brought to Yehud by the Tel Aviv Serious Crimes Investigation Unit in order to mediate. A combined group of mediators, including the father and brother-in-law of the deceased member and members of the negotiation unit, attempted to convince Meshulam's followers inside the compound to surrender to police. Police Commissioner Asaf Hefetz monitored all aspects of the operation the activities of the incident commander and his forces, activities of the commander of the anti-terrorist unit responsible for the inner perimeter of the compound, and those of the negotiation unit in its attempts to get the group to surrender. The tension lasted 26 hours. Finally, through the combined efforts of the commanders and professionals, Meshulam's followers surrendered to police. The compound was disarmed. We combined the use of negotiation along with the clarification to those barricaded inside that we have the option and the capability to carry out a forceful action. And I estimate that the combination of these two possibilities which eventually brought them to surrender and turn themselves in. I 
דם, עוד אימא לחרה, תעידם, תקווה וחלום, השלט מאבא, גם חלק מאימא, תעידם. עוד אימא 